You are watching part three, reassembly of the Ford Model A transmission cutaway video series. Hello, it's Mr. Petergan, and welcome back to this four part series on making a cutaway of the Ford Model A transmission. In the previous chapter, I showed you how I cut away the cast iron case and part of the tower for visibility. So in this chapter, I want to reassemble it. Now remember, I'm not reassembling this to run again. That is, it's a static model and there'll be minimum lubrication so I do not have a big mess as I do this and then I can add a little bit of oil, not very much, after final assembly. But let me start with the transmission tower. All of the tower parts have been cleaned and prepped and ready to reinstall. Now on these two rivets here, I put them on the lathe and cleaned them up so that they will very easily slip into the holes. I don't have to fight with them. You may have ruined those when you took yours apart and have to make some rivets or pins. You won't find these at a store. These forks are in pretty good condition, but there is wear. You can see it here. And a notch right here, which should not be in there. This should be perfectly semicircular. And these slots here are quite a bit wider than what they should be. But very usable, especially just for a cutaway model. I think you know that I shortened the shifting rod and installed a spicer transmission or rear end, it might be a rear end knob off of a truck. Got a good grip. The ball on the shifting rod here should be perfectly spherical and it does have flat spots on it. That I suppose could be rebuilt but it wouldn't be particularly easy. Okay, I'm ready to start the assembly and notice how I have this positioned in a little Wilton vise and this is the driver side of the transmission and when I put these uh, shifting rods in they are not the same. Notice that one has the grooves much closer to the others. That will be the one on the driver side so I'm going to install this one first and I'm using just a little bit of light oil which I won't show on the rods and the different parts as I assemble it. And this rod will go in like this. Now I'm assembling this exactly the way I took it apart so I did have things marked although supposedly the forks are identical. Notice the hole here must line up with this hole. And temporarily I'm going to put one of the rivets in from this side, otherwise they'll drop out on me by gravity. Okay, we're halfway done. Next I will install the spring-loaded plungers and they ride in this portion of the casting just like that. So remember there's a hole in the top here that I have the punch in right now and that's where I'm going to drop this. You can't see it from this camera angle. And once those are in there they will line up with the detent grooves. So I'll bring those back in and now in order to install the other shaft I need to depress that spring a little bit with a punch and that might be a little bit of a struggle. I'm going to take it out of the vise so it doesn't rock around for just a minute. Now using a punch to depress the spring I can fairly easily get the other shaft in and at this point, better back it out just a little bit so that I can get the shifting fork in. Okay. 
and now temporarily install the other rivet. And finally, I will install the threaded plug. And that plug serves no purpose other than to close the hole. Probably a big source of oil leakage. And there it is, the assembled transmission tower. Now I still have to reverse these rivets and peen them over a little bit or flare them. Okay, I reversed this rivet so I can flare it out and I just made up a scrap of steel here to buck that rivet like that and a center punch. It sure would help to have a third hand here, I tell you. All right, that's not going anywhere. Anyway, the rivets are flared and it's done. Okay, the shifting tower is assembled and completed. Let's get busy with the assembly of the main case. I got a big pile of gears and shafts and various parts. I hope I can remember where they go. This is the reverse idler gear shaft. Note the groove right here for a retainer. Note the oil groove in the reverse idler gear. It goes in like this. I thought you would find it interesting to see this oil groove right here so that when that cluster gear is in place oil still can get to the shaft. Similarly, the other end is made with an oil groove. One other thing that's interesting now, when I put this part on in a few minutes, it goes on like this, with this little trough to the bottom, any oil that escapes through the bearing, and there's probably plenty of it, is routed down through here, and back into the main case through this hole. Good design. Okay, this is the counter shaft. Notice the flat spot right here. We'll talk about in a second. Now there are two roller bearings that go into the cluster gear plus a spacer between them. It's interesting to note that one of the bearings is made by Hyatt and the other by Bauer. Two names you don't hear much anymore, although I think they're all part of a big conglomerate like Federal Mogul. Now on the cluster gear, the longer of the two roller bearings goes in on the end that is the small gear. Right there, and then where's my spacer here? Can go in here, followed by the shorter bearing. Now this is easier for me to assemble than yours would be because this is a cutaway and I have access. Otherwise, of course, you've got to come in through the top. Like that. And then, of course, the retainer fits in this groove and on that flat and is bolted into place. Now neither one of those shafts can come out. This is the main shaft with the main drive gear and this is the pilot shaft that goes into the pilot bearing. And this spline, of course, I mentioned before, goes into the clutch. And these are new departure bearings. Now, what's going to keep this whole assembly from falling out? This is the main drive gear retainer. 
again this oil groove here channel will go to the bottom and the little tab here with the hole for the throw out bearing goes to the top and there are four bolts holding that into place. I almost failed to show you this oil hole here on the cluster gear. Don't forget to install a short roller bearing into that hole. There's the shop dog paying me a visit. Now this is the output shaft that goes to the U-joint. Let me assemble these temporarily without the gears that go in here. Just to show you that the entire shaft here is composed of two parts. It is coupled together and drives as one when you're in high gear. In any other gear they revolve independently of one another. Alright, let's assemble it. Now this is the large gear and it is for reverse and first gear and it's splined and goes on like that but before I go any farther second and third gear has to be put on as well and notice the grooves here for the shifting forks are together Now this end into that bearing and the big new departure bearing into the housing up against that retaining ring. There's retaining rings on both ends. I never did take those out to show them to you. This bearing is free to come out and this casting will retain it. And when I install that, remember that the grease circ should go toward the bottom and these screws or bolts have holes drilled in them and if this was a final assembly for a finished car we would safety wire them but I'm certainly not going to do that for this application. I wonder if they had one of these at the old River Rouge plant. Looking good to this point. Okay, I'm going to put the throw out bearing on there even though it serves no purpose for my cutaway other than appearance, but that just slides right on and then there's a spring that holds it in place going through the casting right here maybe this direction something like that well that completes the reassembly here other than the tower now remember that I did not use gaskets or sealers or anything like that because there will never be any oil in this case obviously. I do not like the white rim that I put around here. Looks like a big set of lips. Okay now I'm going to install the shifting tower and the shifting forks have to line up with the grooves on these two gears. two long bolts in the front I don't want oil all over the place but just a couple drops so that uh, we have some lubrication I don't believe I will permanently mount the knuckle at this time because it's just going to bang around during the demonstration so 
That's just slid on there right now and I'll put that into storage. Well, that completes the assembly of the Model A Ford transmission. Hope you liked it. Be sure and watch part four when available when I actually talk about how this works. So long for now. This is Mr. Pete.